Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today you join us in the Valley of Triban, Austria. And we're going to be having a look at the Live to Air SPAC 342 XA42. Uh, it's created by a developer called Live to Air. And it's available to purchase on Sim Market, the Innibuild store and a couple of other online stores too. And it's been out for over six months or so now. It's taken a while for me to get around to reviewing it. But today is the day. I hope you guys find it useful, informative, enjoyable. Make sure you hit like and subscribe down below and share your thoughts in the comments below. It's a low wing aerobatic air aeroplane uh, with fixed conventional landing gear, tailwind, carbon fiber fuselage with a 315 horsepower Lycoming AEIO 580B1 Alpha piston engine and a three blade prop. This particular model, as you can see, is a tandem variant of the XA41, which is a single seat version uh, developed by the same team in Speyer around 2004. There are a number of things that the developer has done that is included within their package, including some liveries created by our good old friend Tapsy, who's created a few of our Osprey Airways liveries too. Now, the model itself is really quite nice, as you can see here comes with a variety of liveries which have been painted by Tapsy but the model itself um, has actually been purchased via a development website and uh, I found it for about 20 US dollars as a model price. From release to now it's moved through various updates to version 1.33 with five new liveries and numerous physics improvements to the aeroplane as well as a couple of bug fixes along the way. Smoke switches are active, they can be controlled via the landing lights key map and they've improved the physics apparently for better spin control and flick manoeuvres. It is an aerobatic aeroplane after all so I'd expect a little bit of playfulness, certainly very sporty controls. If you do fancy getting your hands on this then the links for it will be in the description down below. If we move into the cockpit area we've got a tablet on the left hand side which is uh, an EFB placed in there by the folks at live to air It's got nine apps, ground equipment being uh, one of those features. Ground equipment being one of the features, weight and balance, weather checklist, GPS notes, acrobatics, I think it should say aerobatics, flappy plane and the about page as, long, as well as a button here for the hide EFB. Within the ground equipment options you can select car, chocks, fuel truck and stack tick objects. You can change your states between ready for takeoff and cold and dark too, as well as turn on the interior lights. By enabling the vehicle options, what that has allowed is a Red Bull fuel truck and uh, a Mercedes to appear. The fuel truck's quite a nice touch. As you can see, the fuel line is added in um, to the aeroplane at the moment. The vehicle, I'm not so sure about, a little bit random. But then live to air have created a car for Microsoft Flight Simulator. But that's a different topic entirely. The weight and balance tab can allow you to refuel, uh, change your weights between all the tanks and also add in a front seat pilot and baggage for payload changes. Having said that, if you want to do specifically aerobatics then you need to enable the acrobatic mode and that will clear the wing tanks and there's a really basic checklist too. The EFB itself is um, in a bit of a weird position it's mounted downwards you can click it to adjust the way that it is maneuvered and positioned though it's a little bit clunky with the way that it actually does move it's uh, pretty much uh, snappable click spots uh, and I'd like to see that animated and improved to actually have a nice rotational transition instead the aerobatics mode can be enabled allowing you to choose different smoke and you can refill the smoke oil as well uh, instantly in flight if you wish. We'll select red for the purpose of today. And a flappy plane, a pointless uh, a pointless game, not really sure why it's added in, a little bit random but hey ho. You can change between uh, different configurations so you can have the GTN XI 750 with the Garmin 3X. Um, different other avionics suites as combinations of the aeroplane. So you can flick it and change it to how you wish the aeroplane to be specifically set up for your own use.
Looking into textures, uh, as basic as they are, they're okay, they're nice, uh, certainly suitable enough for the price. The seat textures are a little bit blurred and a little bit washed, but the carbon fibre style uh, dashboard's quite nice. Familiarise yourself with the aircraft layout, throttle, mixture, and prop. Elevator trim is a little click spot down the bottom on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side we've got smoke, ACL avionics battery and fuel pump and the start switch magnetos. Up here we've got the timer, minute seconds, start stop and memory. And the screen on the left here doesn't have any clickable buttons which is a little bit disappointing. The centre one however does. We'll get the aeroplane switched on, we'll see what uh, happens, see what it's like to fly. Holding the brakes then, in lieu of any part brake being on the aeroplane. We're going to flick the magneto through to start engage. We can now bring the avionics online. Radio stacks down the bottom. Transponder down here as well. Screen on the left shows you your engine T's and P's, RPM and all that sort of thing. Unfortunately, as we've already mentioned, these buttons here don't do anything. Frustratingly, on the Sim Market product page, probably on the others as well, though I haven't checked those, it does say on here that all buttons are clickable and there is a working circuit breaker panel. So the circuit breakers do isolate the avionics, but they don't isolate the uh, display on the left hand side, and it should do if that's the case. Panel off and on. Again, same sort of thing. Comms and transponder, pull those. Uh, however, you can see down here, they are still on. So again, that's something that is not correct on the product description. One other thing that I've noticed with the brakes, if you let go of them, you can hear them squeaking, but they don't actually have any animation beyond left and right with the rudder. And that's a real shame. As we taxi out, another thing I've noticed is the emergency ELT rocker switch. You can test it. You can hear it clicking. But there's no animation. We're going to take the aeroplane on a little test flight around the airfield and in the valley. We're going to look at the aerodynamics, the flight controls, see how she handles and take off and landing and with a couple of uh, basic aerobatics as well to test the physics of the flight model of the add-on. Having a little look at the ailerons, uh, the control deflections, the control surfaces. What we can see, if we go to the rear as well, we can see the elevators deflect there too. We shouldn't need all the runway, however, uh, this is the first time flying the aeroplane. Therefore, uh, we'll use the whole runway just so we can gently accelerate uh, and see how she flies. There is a strange tendency, even at idle, for the aeroplane to want to just turn right all the time. Uh, and that's a little bit weird. Now, there are three, currently, three reviews on Sim Market for this add-on. Maxime, Lucas and David. Maxime has written, very good aerobatic add-on. Flight model is top notch. The EFB is packed with good ideas and features. The dev is very responsive and put a lot of efforts into it. It's a no brainer purchase if you like these kind of planes. The month before, around August 2022, Lucas has said, Rather well done. I was skeptical at first, but it flies nice. It's modelled nice. Textures are good. And on top of that, it has cool and unique custom EFB smartphone with apps, weather, GPS, notepad. Even comes with a well-modelled fuel truck and transport car for those who like extra immersion. All in all, you can tell the dev has put passion into this XA42. And then David has responded uh, two days, in fact, before Lucas's review, saying, "Well built and fantastic control over all, all over the plane. We'll recommend it for all sim lovers out there." Let's see if those reviews are correct. Okay, feeding the power in. Let's see how she flies.
Very tricky to take off with that. And I'm actually using 50% throttle. That's full throttle. And I think the takeoff would have been entirely uncontrollable if it was full throttle, uh, actually, to be honest. Let's go for a little spin. Climbing up, we've got it on aerobatic mode. So the wing tank, the wing tanks are empty, and actually it's uh, very light. Therefore, control responsiveness. It seems okay. We can actually fly it fairly gently, uh, but we have to be very considerate and gentle on the controls to get that response out of it. However, if we wanted to be a little bit more snappy. And that was full stick. It's a little bit wild, actually. Weirdly wild. Um, I wouldn't have expected that level of uh, immediate multiple spin. I would have gone for more like this. That's what I would have expected as a bit more of a, a natural thing. But that was with about 25% aileron deflection using my uh, hardware here. One of the things the developer has said is... Uh, in the latest update at least it has the ability to fly knife edges so we will have a little look at that in a moment whilst Microsoft Flight Simulator does weird things to the weather but first we're going to illuminate with smoke smoke's on and a little bit of left and right and a little corkscrew just to see what that looks like for you guys. And uh, let's do that knife edge as a bit of a test. So Ty Toby Eye Tracker is on again, speed's good. And we're going to head up. Ninety degrees, we're gonna kick a left. There we go. It does feel as though we are flying on rails a little bit. Straight and level, speeds 130 knots. I'm gonna uh, basically I'm gonna apply some hard rudder to see what happens. Uh, countered with some aileron. And again, that's a little bit weird. Try a bit smoother just to see what happens. There we go. Crazy slip. And then back out again. It's not really much of a smooth transition, unfortunately, no matter how gentle I seem to be with the controls. little loop half loop at least just to have a little look at some of these uh, smoke trails and what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll try some sort of stall turn with a bit of a rudder kick on the external view. It's good fun to fly, but there are issues with the flight model, the physics, the aerodynamics, the way the aeroplane behaves. Um, I guess you guys need to decide effectively whether or not you want a more arcade style flight model and aeroplane add-on or if you want that high fidelity aeroplane uh, which this is not. The developer themselves they have uh, created the Mercedes Payware car for Microsoft Flight Simulator a, a very old add-on in itself something I don't really feel like ha yeah, has a place in the flight simulator. Um, 
but I feel like that is the kind of market that they are angling their products towards. Okay, so heading back to the airfield for an attempt at an approach. It has been quite enjoyable to fly. You can have it to fly gently if you want it to, but you do need to carefully, carefully try and be gentle on the controls to get that as a response. I feel like it's aimed at the market uh, akin to sort of Xboxes or those of uh, those of you who kind of enjoy f driving around on the road below in a, in a Mercedes AMG instead. I feel like that is where the product is marketed towards rather than high fidelity or even mid-range um, add-on level simmers. Decelerating then on the runway, not quite sure how it handles, so I'm trying carefully to brake so we don't cause a prop strike. And there we go. So not a bad landing at all, actually. But even then, at the incredibly slow speed, where I've just tapped the brakes a bit too hard, the nose has uh, dived forwards and the tail has shot up at, off the ground. So a little nervous moment there. All in all, it's a bit of a 50-50 review, really. It has been quite fun, but it is very arcadey. Um, whether you like that type of flying or not will distinguish whether or not this is the add-on for you. It's obviously not for me to sort of say. But I hope you found the video review useful. Do you share your thoughts in the comments below, whether you already have the aircraft, whether you're one of those three reviewers, in fact, or if you've got more information about uh, certain things that you would like to share. Make sure you hit like and subscribe down below as well. And come and have a little look at my next uh, live stream too. It'd be great to have you join us on board for that. In the meantime, as always, thank you very much for flying along and watching. And I'll see you very soon. Take care.